Climate change, global warming, 10, 20, 30 years to save the planet. We are bombarded with messages and images of polar bears and glaciers. But what does it mean for Shropshire? I know we are facing huge changes to the way that we live our lives and I want to know why and what we can do about it. Throughout this video we refer to the climate crisis. We believe we are at a crisis point and we need to act now. Global temperatures are rising. Greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels and methane from livestock are squarely in frame. These rising temperatures will have devastating consequences. Sea levels will rise as the polar ice caps melt. Weather events will become more extreme. Planetary systems such as the Gulf Stream may change or even cease altogether. These changes are happening too rapidly for wildlife to adapt and many ecologists are already noticing changes and even extinctions. Whatever we do, the planet will survive, but many species we treasure, including ourselves, may not. Shropshire is a long way from the sea, but is it safe from floods? The River Severn is predicted to rise 800 millimetres by 2050. Virtually all of our historic towns are built by rivers within the floodplain. Will your house be safe? Our options are to build even higher flood barriers or to move housing to higher land but this will put pressure on land currently being used by farmers to feed us. But what will we be eating? What climate changes have you noticed during your lifetime? I think it's the uh, occurrence of extreme weather events happening quite close together. Uh, when I was young, uh, kind of 50 years ago, the uh, you'd have a, a freak hot summer or a very bad winter once every five years. And the weather patterns were quite dependable. Uh, but recently, take this year for example, we've had one of the wettest, mildest winters on record, floods, and then within a fortnight, we were almost into drought conditions in May and June. Um, you know, such a quick turnaround to uh, rare meteorological events next to each other. So I think it's that rapid change of um, weather conditions that I've really noticed. How are you adapting your business to changing weather patterns? I'm looking at different crops, especially growing different grasses and putting uh, deep rooting plants in the grass lays like chicory, which uh, is very deep rooting and will be able to tap into moisture at a much deeper level than grasses and keep growing if we have very dry conditions. I'm also thinking of uh, using a grass called Timothy within the grass lays that actually again is resistant or better to cope with wet conditions. So it's trying to broaden the amount or the range of varieties of grasses and plants that we grow for the cows. What do you think your farm will look like in 25 years? Yes. Uh, well, I may not be around to see it, <laughs> but I think it will have changed. Um, I'm experimenting with actually planting fruit trees around the farm to perhaps look at agroforestry to use trees to get crops as well as the uh, actually harvesting from the land. So that would be quite a good way of um, diversifying. I think also perhaps the range of crops we're growing. If the, crop, if the climate becomes warmer, we may be able to grow our own proteins like soya in this country, rather than having to import it from places like Brazil where they're destroying the rainforest. So it's those changing crops. Um, and it'll be experimentation as well. Shropshire's wildlife has been under pressure from intensive land uses, chemical pesticides and destruction of habitats for decades. The climate crisis might be the last straw. Okay, I'm Martin George and I'm a local bird watcher and volunteer with the British Trust for Ornithology. I've been involved with survey work for, for many years, going back since the 80s. What impacts of the climate crisis have you seen on birds in Shropshire? We're primarily seeing uh, the early arrival of spring migrants, um, which can lead to a bit of a disconnect between their food supply uh, and when they arrive. Uh, and some birds are overwintering now that didn't used to. 
Where in Shropshire have you noticed the biggest impacts on birds? Uh, in people's gardens we're starting to see uh, birds arriving earlier, uh, migrants arriving earlier and out in the wider countryside the conditions can be quite challenging for birds, say in woodlands where the increased energy in the system can cause a deluge for two or three days in May or June that can take out all of the blue tits or great tits pretty much in that area, migrants like pied flycatchers. Uh, the trend to warmer summers generally can make life very difficult for birds like snipe and lapwing that are still holding on on uh, farmland uh, in, in the county so the challenges are quite wide ranging really. This is all rather depressing but humans are ingenious and inventive in a crisis. We need governments to take a decisive lead but the climate crisis is too big even for governments. Everybody needs to play their part. Well I'm Robin, I used to work for the Wildlife Trust uh, and I've been helping the Wildlife Trust develop a, a kind of climate action strategy uh, and calculating their carbon footprint uh, and I'm also working with the Better Shrewsbury Transport Group, campaigning against the North West Road, which is going to be a carbon nightmare. How can nature help combat the climate crisis? OK, well, nature, the vegetation that we see around us, not in the middle of the car park, uh, basically sucks carbon out of the atmosphere. And um, that carbon is stored in the vegetation and it's stored in the soil. So, um, like trees, woodlands will store a lot of carbon, both in the vegetation and the soil. Uh, peatlands a lot in the soil uh, and grassland uh, it, it's mostly in the soil again. Can you explain a few areas in Shropshire that are storing large amounts of carbon? Okay well the, the obvious ones would be the meres and mosses um, the, the carbon there has been built up like I said, over thousands of years uh, and the important thing there is that we need to maintain those meres and mosses we don't want to, if they degrade that carbon is released so we need to keep it stored in the in the peat there well, this is Fens and Wexel Moss. It's the um, location of um, the uh, current bog light project, and this is to restore the moss to um, an active peat form in surface because previously it was drained for peat cutting, and so it become um, a, a, a net source of carbon. And the idea of the restoration is to re wet the bog and with um, cellular bonding and contour bonding keep the water close to the surface and then that restarts sphagnum growth which is then actively locking that carbon up. Peat bogs, are, um, while they only form about 2-3% to 3 of the um, uh, land surface area in the world contain more carbon and, and lock it up than all, all the forests in the world and all the rainforests put together. Shropshire Climate Action Partnership are helping communities plan for a zero carbon future. I spoke to Liz Knowles about how she's getting involved. Well, the SCAP is trying to draw stakeholders and people from across Shropshire to tackle the climate and biodiversity crises that we're facing at the moment. And a lot of that will be through what happens in communities. Um, so what's happening in Ponsbury now is the kind of thing we'd like to see going right across the county with um, planting trees, wildflowers, um, maybe more ambitious schemes later on for energy production. But, you know, it's, it's all part of a, a movement that we hope we'll get the people of Shropshire involved in. I got involved because this is a crisis we're in and I'm very concerned about the state of nature and also the need to get carbon out of the atmosphere otherwise we're, we're already in trouble we're going to be even bigger trouble if we don't get moving now. The climate crisis is happening now and in Shropshire the things we cherish will change or disappear unless we act and act swiftly. The alternative is unthinkable.